Hey friends, I am excited to talk with you about um, the secrets of mom blogs and why I want you to be intentional um, and beware of what you're taking in on mom blog spaces. So this is really interesting, right? Because I am a blogger. I am the leader of Postpartum Together, the founder um, of Postpartum Together, which is a community that is built to normalize, bring education, support, normalization to the postpartum experience and to the community. Um, so I run a blog, right? But I'm also here to tell you about why I want you to be aware of mom blogs and be really mindful about your intake. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the things behind um, mom blogs and some of the things that are used and how they might be impacting you. So if you're watching this um, a little bit later, hello, if you're here with us live, let me know that you're here. We are gonna be talking about um, mom blogs and why sometimes they're actually more harmful than helpful when it comes to postpartum and motherhood. So again, I'm Chelsea, founder of Postpartum Together, which is this um, online space here on Instagram, but it is also a blog, believe it or not, postpartumtogether.com and a um, small group coaching program where we take small groups of women between three and 10 months and really help them to process out the postpartum experience to find confidence, connection, and improve communication. So mom blogs. I would love to hear in the comments if any of you um, follow mom blogs and what you follow them for. I'm going to start by giving an example um, from my own life and then I'm going to be sharing a little bit about what I see with my clients and throughout all of that we're going to talk about um, the things that happen in creating a mom blog. So hello to all of you. Um, it's so good to see these mamas hopping on. So I remember when my son wouldn't sleep. <laughs> It was terrible. And I remember from about, you know, month, about week five or six, I started to be like, okay, what the hell do we do? And then a couple months later, it just felt like, holy cow. Okay, so I see sleep and feeding. And here's what I did. I felt so overwhelmed and I started to Google, right? I turned to Dr. Google, which was filled with some medical articles, um, some things from publications like parents and what to expect but then also a shit ton of mom blogs. What I found when I was reading these mom blogs is that every single one seemed to have like the secret sauce to getting your kid to sleep or 10 ways to make sure your kid sleeps. Beware, number seven is so important. Um, and I found all of these different methods. Now, I don't say this to write them off because there is a lot that we can learn and there is a lot of important information out there, alas. I run a blog and I fully believe in it and I think that you should hang out at postpartumtogether.com. But also, what I was finding is that I was looking every day and sometimes multiple times a day for the thing, the one trick, the one method, the one footstep cadence or nursery rhyme that I needed to fix my problems, right? I wanted to fix my problems and I was just dying to find the right blog to help me figure it out. But um, every time I would try something new or I would implement it or I'd be like, I already tried that and it didn't work for me. And I wondered like, okay, am I broken? Is my baby broken? Is like, where is the gap here? Because I read that these were the 10 tips and number six was gonna change my life and it didn't. And I found myself doing these same things with like, baby led weaning, how much should my kid be you know, taking in? And again, if you're just joining, I'm saying there is a lot of good information out there. There is a lot to take in and a lot to learn. But what I don't want you doing is being in this place where I was, being in this place where I see a lot of my clients, where we're spending so much time on mom blogs, looking for the key to solve our problems looking for that one piece of information that's been missing from every other hour long search that we've done. And I found that when it came to my child's sleep, I actually didn't know a whole lot about his natural rhythms in his sleep and the things that he could communicate to me as a baby. And I didn't know a whole lot about how I was feeling and I couldn't even identify like, is our current rhythm a problem for us or is it just, being a problem because somebody says this shouldn't happen, but actually what we're doing is working for us. You know, so I was not in tune 
very much with my own family unit, with my own intuition, with my own set of values and where we wanted to go as a family because I felt so inundated by doing it the way I should, by finding this secret key information that was going to change everything for me. And so I also see this with my clients, right? They're feeling like there's so much out there and you open up Pinterest or um, you know, sometimes even here on Instagram, Facebook, wherever we are, you're gonna see clickbait. And let's talk about why that is, okay? So when you have a blog, and again, I have a blog, so I'm you know, very honest about they can be good. But um, when you have a blog, your goal is to get page views. And to get page views, you need clicks. And to get clicks, you need something really catchy that emotionally impacts your person who is watching or who is searching. So if I say to you, how I lost all the baby weight in six weeks, you can do it too, or you know, like the six secret tips to blah, 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 you're gonna wanna go there because emotionally you're looking for the answer. You want this to be solved. And so blogs are written not necessarily in order. Um, they're not gonna show up to you in order of, hi cat, of professionalism or um, research or backing. They're going to come to you in order of these key clickbait terms and SEO. So we don't need to get into all that. <laughs> but we say this to say, I don't want you in this space where you're spending all this time worrying about these clickbait things that are made, oh my God, I have like a cat ass in my face, that are made is that not like the metaphor of life right now? 2020, I have a cat ass in my face, okay? Quote that one. Um, but I don't want you to be in this place where you are feeling so consumed with all the tips, with all the ideas, with all the things that you must do that you're not actually having time to know and trust yourself as a mom. One of the most common problems I see, not problems, struggles. One of the most common struggles I see with my clients is lacking confidence in motherhood. Hello, is that not so relatable? And not only are we, you know, dealing with this in ourselves, like you're doing something completely new, but now you have all of these avenues. You have social media, you have blogs, you have media outlets, like all these things telling you how good you should be as a mom and how it should be looking and how it should be feeling. And I'm afraid we're finding that moms are less in touch with what's working for them or what their actual values are because of all this temptation to look into the catchphrases and the clickbait. So mama, do yourself a favor. Take a step away when you need to. Take a step away from all the information and take some time with yourself. Ask yourself, is this not working because it's not working for our family? Or do I wanna change this because it seems like it's what I should do or what um, these different spaces are telling me to do. When you're looking for information, you know, ask yourself, is this in line with my values? And just because it says it's the way, doesn't mean it actually is, right? Clickbait is real. I'm not saying it's bad. I understand driving traffic to a blog is so valuable. But I also, as a mom, and as a coach of postpartum women, want to remind you and encourage you that you don't have to do it all and that there's literally no secret sauce to motherhood. Ah! There's no secret way to get your baby to eat what you want or to sleep how you want or, you know, like, if someone says they have the secret that you've been missing, they're full of shit. Go on. Believe in yourself, moms. I believe in you. I'm here for you. And uh, I want you to keep kicking ass because that comes from the inside and because you're capable of doing it and not because you followed this, you know, 12 step program from a uh, blogger who made shit up and put it out of their ass and had really good SEO. Yeah. So I'm going to check in with these comments before I go. Cat hair everywhere. All of this stuff is crazy. Um, inspired mama. Hey, first time mama. Congrats, welcome. You are not alone in any time that you feel like you are. Um, and this shit is hard, but there are also so many supports and understanding it is valuable. Um, dealing with confidence, right? So I hope that what I shared touched 
on this. Like we struggle with confidence when we're constantly comparing ourselves. And this can happen on social media. This can happen um, by reading blogs that tell us what we should do. So I encourage you if you're struggling with confidence to really step back and to look at your family values, to look at what you want your child to remember and to stop giving too much value and too much weight into how you think it should look or how you should look or how you should be as a mom. So listen internally um, and really find your confidence from there. I also find that confidence comes with um, advocating for yourself to, to have some time, to have some space, and to be able to understand and process your postpartum experience, which is 100% why um, postpartum together small groups exist. And body, um, similarly, I encourage you to stop following any inspiration accounts um, that make you feel like you should be doing something different or that you're a problem or you know that so-and-so had a baby at the same time and look at her body and what am I doing wrong? I'm such a lazy, you know, all these paths we go down. Um, learn about your body, learn about your pelvic floor, learn about your core, learn about the ways your body and mind actually change in pregnancy and birth and postpartum. And when you understand that, you start to respect it more. Um, you respect it more than worrying about weight. You respect it more than bounce back and transformation pictures. You really respect what has happened and then start with nurturing that, um, nurturing that with movement, nurturing that with foods that you enjoy, um, but finding this less comparative, um, less restrictive and more empowering view of your body. And then I saw um, Dice Girl was sharing that influencers can be so harmful. Yeah. So I actually um, really struggle with that over on my personal page, which is Chelsea Keeps It Real. Um, sometimes I get like influencer pitches and stuff and I go back and forth with that word, right? Because um, I want to have positive influence on our understanding of postpartum and womanhood and motherhood, but also see in a lot of cases where, um, again, this is a money thing, right? Like a blog can be written recommending a product because they were paid well. Maybe not because that blogger even liked the product or the same with influencers, right? So yes, take that stuff with a grain of salt. Um, hey, what about the mama? Go back and um, check out the video. I'm actually wrapping it up right now, but we're talking about mom blogs and some of the pressure we get caught up in and how a lot of things are very clickbaity and um, not always, you know, authentic and worth all of our stress. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot of subliminal messaging in influence marketing. So it's really important that you are, um, building trusting relationships with people that you follow like you know don't don't follow them if you don't trust them and get that good vibe that they're really looking out for you um and only you know it's great to share things i love to share things i just shared my favorite freaking period underwear um and i am literally obsessed with them and i believe that they change how we experience periods um so it's not that i'm against influencer marketing either but i do think as you say in blogs, in these online spaces, like so many places, um, money trumps authentic reviews and authentic experiences and recommendations. And there are a lot of people, you know, making their money off of recommending things they're getting paid for well, instead of, you know, things that they would really share with their best friend. So that's a great thing to keep in mind, Dice Girl. Thank you. Um, what about the mama? I look forward to hearing more from you as you go back and watch the replay. Okay. You guys, I'm out of here. I'm actually about to send my newsletter. So if you're on and you're not on my newsletter, um, you need to go to my bio right now, find that subscribe, make sure you get my weekly newsletter and that we're able to stay in touch about these topics because we are freaking changing the narrative around postpartum day by day. And I'm so glad that you're here for it. Bye.